really pleased to announce that we are going to have koala priority areas twice the size of the ACT in South East Queensland to protect koalas like this. This is so important. It's a once in a generational opportunity to do it. I, I could hardly bear to watch the video, quite frankly. Here's the Premier under her watch. They have approved wind turbine developments which will clear more than 30 square kilometres of koala habitat. Mm. They have another 70 square kilometres in the planning stage. So that's 100 square kilometres, more than 100 square kilometres which of koala habitat which is de destined to be cleared because this government will simply approve it. And yet they are spending money on little koala projects here and there. Oh, hello. So got quite a bit of time. Oh, I'm disgusted, absolutely disgusted. Um, that Lotus Creek area uh, is worthy of being one of the best koala national parks in Australia. Uh, Palaszczuk announced in the last budget a $250 million acquisition fund for the acquisition of national parks and protected areas in Queensland. As far as I know, she hasn't spent one cent of that, of that <laughs> budget amount. And she could go there and buy that, prop, buy that property up at Lotus Creek and make that one of the most significant koala national parks in Australia. It is the hotspot of koalas in Queensland, if not Australia. And to see Anastasia Palaszczuk there cuddling up to koalas and showing this insincere, uh, um, insincere connection to koalas and wanting to protect them is, is comical and farcical. She has the ability to stop some of these projects that are in koala habitat but like you said earlier, the state government is just rubber stamping these projects. As soon as they come in, they're rubber stamped. And, and, and when, we, when we say they are destroying koala habitat, they are really destroying it. And I was very naive up until three years ago, very naive about renewable energy. I thought renewable energy would be going into cleared areas. I didn't really understand the capacity factors of renewable energy and the amount of infrastructure that you need to try to replace some of the, the coal, coal plants. and and um, thermal plants that we have in Australia. Renewable energy projects are, need to have a lot of space. They're, they consist of a huge um, spatial footprint and, um, and we need a lot of it across the country and it all needs to be connected with very expensive high voltage transmission lines, um, which means that power prices can really never realistically come down because half of your electricity costs that you get for your, your residential home. Half of that cost is transmission infrastructure. And that transmission infrastructure will have to be doubled, if not tripled. And Chris Bowen has indicated we need 28,000 kilometres of new transmission infrastructure across Australia. And that cost is going to be borne by, by electricity users, by mums and dads um, across the country. So the cost of renewable energy is going to be very, very expensive. I looked at the maths around renewables and what's what's required and the facts indicate well nuclear energy is really going to be one of our solutions um, mm. and, uh, and and now I'm a nuclear advocate and I think that is one a, a part of the solution I, I see beauty uh, and I look for beauty and uh, it breaks my heart to think that a lot of these hills and mountains once they're smashed to smithereens for these turbines they can never be they can never come back. Today's announcement is 100% about protecting these koalas for future generations. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm so pleased that we're doing it.